love song for Bobby Soto. I guess you have to be an alcoholic to understand, he said by way of passing. I guess, I replied, wondering if this tragic romanticism accrued to all alcoholics or just the artistic ones. We were driving down Mount Vernon, sitting way up in his big truck like kings, surveying the botanicas, the carnicerias, the llanterias, painted yellow and fuchsia in that fussy cobalt blue. The sun shone so white it hurt, oscillating, breaking, the surge and crest and retreat, a worry like a Philip Glass song played by the Kronos Quartet, dosed on two grams of methamphetamine. The sawing up and down, the spiking heat, and the blue notes of the soundtrack were the peaks and valleys of a startled afternoon dragging the rest of the day like a sack of rusted auto parts. This is where we are. Buzzards, dressed like realtors, circling above the humble scavengers of change, mauling the carrion of family court, hiding thousands in their secret bank accounts. The blue-black lizards, the crows dyed ochre and silver, the cotton blossoms of concern trudging pushing shopping carts full of burning newspapers down the length of the shimmering afternoon. I said, you gotta hand it to the human spirit, even with the war going on and all the other crap. People still open up their tienditas, their quinceanera shops, their places to sell piñatas for a kid's birthday. <laughs> you fool, he laughed. These businesses are all just fronts. In the back, they're laundering money, or they got some mojaditos held hostage for 2,000 ransom. I guess, I said, as we passed a church where a short line of white cars idled in front of the vestibule. The drivers in white shirts and black vests waited, wiped the backs of their necks. You guess, he laughed. You guess. Though they hissed like wasps trapped in the cab of the truck, I let the taunts go. I had to. Their sting would have only amplified the weak swat of my reply. I guess, I said, knowing I'd be judged by the harsh tautology, but I refused to burrow into the low cynicism of, the, of those times. Give teeth to the lie. Lip the lispy Heil Hitler to explain the irrational cruelty that finds its way passing through the anesthetized cities, the way alcoholics pass shoe polish and paint thinner through white bread to distill the anxiety and keep the spirit strong. When we die and go to heaven, will we still be together? It's a song he sings when he is worried. He doesn't mean me and him. He means somebody else or nobody else or else he just means himself. He sang it then and I pictured us riding high in his F-250 on streets paved with gold, the angel gangs toking up on the corners where the blocas on the walls all looked like Las Siqueros and Basquiat's. Heaven, he said, is just like the farm. The fence is easy enough to climb, but nobody ever does. If you do, then they had another five years. It's not worth it, he says, and I'm sure never going back. My name is Adam Daniel Martinez, and this poem is called Santa Fe Whistle. I've roved around, but here you remain, in the same bed you slept in. All these years, I'm reminded upon return. Death is near. Home is queer after a while. It no longer exists. You just float along like stagnant water in urban lakes or putrid ponds. Where people pour pollution and graffiti lines the public restroom walls. Clear signs of a poor economy. A few miles from where Mago sleeps sits Seacum Lake. Once a pristine park near a presently dilapidated downtown San Bernardino. My parents took me to feed the ducks, 
old hard bread, now a haven, for vagrants, vandalism, and violent crimes. Druggies and hoes earn cash in an urn with ash. Divers comb the muck for evidence of a holy war. Mago made a living working many years at Santa Fe Depot. I miss hearing that whistle blow. Hello, this is Juan Delgado. I'll be reading Verdulagas. I'll be reading the second part only. It's called Song, Verdulagas. Hey, Verdulagas. Sprawling is already all around us. Lot de abandonado, pedidos y encontrados. That dog guarding el mismo gate, barking as if we're not beyond the fencing with you. No somos salvajes. That girl walking past another barrio sings that niños blanco y morón know that hierba. Let's save her. Hey, that girl walking past another barrio lot de verdulagas. Abandonado sings that niños blanco y morón pedidos y encundados know that sprawling hierba. That dog guarding his mismo gate barking as if we're not already beyond the fencing with you. No somos salvajes. Let's savor around us. I married a San Bernardinian. Sometimes when we are asleep, I am afraid a mountain will rise from within you. Your eyelids still carry the dust that was brought with the evening winds. Your eyes turn gray like the smoky skies that appeared above the schoolyard when you were a child. Whole cities surrounding San Marino swept their smog into it. The smog so unbearable they canceled P class. In your dreams, you return to your grandfather's house on Tanner Circle. You are six years old. You play at the back where the orange groves used to be. You become lost between branches of barren trees. Your cousin Mikey is with you, climbing the dirt mounds formed from skeletons of orange orchards. In your memories, you walk down 9th Street to Our Lady of Guadalupe Trine Church, where you were an altar boy, where your grandfather is still a deacon, where after mass your family went with their own olla to get offerings a menudo from Zacatecas Cafe. When we go back to visit off the freeway, every time you see Mount Vernon Avenue, you find yourself on the passenger side of a car, your friend Emilio at the wheel. He drives down the hill at 75 miles per hour on a dare, crashes at the bottom. A fire engulfs the car. Sometimes, in your mind, you don't make it out of that fire. Hello, my name is James Luna. I grew up on the west side of San Bernardino, and my contribution for this anthology is a poem entitled The Santa Fe Whistle. By way of author's note for this poem, the setting is a time before 24-hour cartoon TV channels. When I was a kid, if I wanted to watch cartoons, I'd only had the time between 3 and 5 p.m. Let's begin. 2.57 p.m. He stands in the parking lot of the Church of Our Lady of Guadalupe with his dad watching an usher dressed as a centurion, yell at the teenager, undressed as Jesus, while his mom, with the rest of the Guadalupanas, stir pots of lentils, fry nopales, and check the capirotada, and pray there will be enough. 3 p.m., two miles away, the whistle. At the Santa Fe yard, howls and suspicious overtones at the workers. Breaks over! His nine-year-old ears intuit that sound 
as the only time he controls the television. The bear in the fedora, the Neolithic family, the talking gray rabbit, each chasing, shooting, exploding each other with comic immortality. Except for today, the first Friday, after the first full moon, after the vernal equinox. The teenager hangs his head, and everyone, including the boy, kneels on the pavement. His stomach growls, because in his religion, he cannot eat until his Savior has died. <laughs>